Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at Catullus 1 and do some scansion practice. So if you haven't taken a look, um, this might be your first time looking at Latin poetry, Catullus is often one that we use in high school just to ease our students in and get them used to the whole idea of poetry, scansion, meter, all this good stuff. If you want more information on it, videos and resources, you can check out Nova Latin. There is a section um, under my textbook where I have Catullus and a bunch of his poems. Feel free to check it out. The other thing I'd encourage you to do, if you haven't watched it yet, um, I would encourage you to watch my video on Latin meter and scansion or else this is going to be very confusing for you and you might not have any clue what I'm talking about. But basically what I'm going to do in this video is lead you through the scansion and the meter of Catullus 1 so you can practice it, right? This is something we do a lot um, with my students and just to prep you for other types of Latin poetry, the AP test, things like that. So hopefully you've already seen it. If not, I would pause this video, go watch the other one. Otherwise, you're going to be very confused unless, unless you've learned it in class, which of course is, is totally fine. But just make sure that before you move forward in this video, you at least know what I mean by scansion, meter, long and short syllables, things like that. Okay, so to dive in, Catullus 1 is in hendecasyllabic meter. So this is something I mentioned in my other video, but it looks like this. Basically what you have are 11 syllables broken into five feet. The first foot is gonna be either long, long, a spondy, long, short, or short, long, right? It's not gonna be short, short, but it's gonna be one of those three things. Then your second foot is gonna be a dactyl, so long, short, short. Then you have long, short as your third foot, long short as your fourth foot, and then long, and we put an X, it could be long, short, kind of whatever, to finish off the fifth foot. So this is what we call hendecasyllabic meter, right? This is sort of the um, the framework within which Catullus is writing Catullus 1, okay? So here's the poem on its own. It looks like this. And again, when you do poetry, you don't just read this. So you wouldn't want to read it as cui dono, lepidum, no one libellum, arido, and kind of go from there. That's not the right idea. That would be the equivalent of sort of reading, um, you know, like song lyrics out loud. You're missing the whole point. So what we want to do is we want to take this poem and see the meter, sort of the, the rhythm to it, and how Catullus structured everything to understand his skill as a poet. So let's start with the first line. So the first line has this. You have cui, dono, lepidum, noum, and libellum. Okay, those words are broken up into five feet. So the first word cui is a long, right? You have the diphthong. So cui is long, then you have do. Those two syllables, the spondy, are starting our first foot. So you have cui, do, both long. That the, the no in dono, right, the second o, is long, and it's setting up the dactyl. So in other words, we need a long, short, short. So the no is long because there's a long mark over the O. Lepa, those two sounds, the E and the I, are both short. There's nothing to lengthen them. So the second foot goes no lepa. Then you have doom, right? The last part of the word uh, lepidum is our third foot, the beginning of it. It's long because you have, it's not long by nature, meaning there's no long mark over the U, but because the U is followed by an M and an N, that consonant cluster, it lengthens the U. The O in noam is short. The wum in noam is long to start our fourth foot, right? Because you have an M followed by an L. That consonant cluster lengthens the um in noam. The I in libellum is short. The E is long because, again, in libellum, the final foot, the E is followed by two consonants, two Ls. It lengthens it, and then you have the final sound, which is short. Okay, so this line is going to go cui do no lepidum no wum libellum right? You're kind of holding those long marks a little bit. And that gives you the rhythm of it, okay? And it also lets you see kind of the skill of Catullus because these words have to be in this particular order in, uh, in order to keep the meter. So in other words, you can use the word lepidum, but it needed to be in that particular spot so that you can have the no and dono starting your dactyl. Okay, and when you get things like libellum, right, the BE in libellum, it works because the two L's lengthen it and it finishes your foot. So all these words are very carefully selected. They have to be in a specific order or else the meter just simply wouldn't work. Then we have the second line. A uh, is long, ri is short. So we start with a long short with a uh, ri. Do is long, modo is two shorts. There's our dactyl for the second foot. Then you have pu, the long U makes it long. Mi is short. Now, when you get to pumike x, there's going to be a lesion here, right? You can see I kind of grayed out the final e on pumike. It's going to allied into the x of expolitum. So the sound is going to be kex, right? It's long because you have an x, which is really k and s put together. That is a consonant cluster. But even without that, there's a p following it. So everything is telling you the e needs to be long. So you have kex po, right? That o is short. 
The li in expolitum is long, and then the tum is short. So when you put it together, you have a re do mo do pu me expolitum, right? You're kind of getting that rhythm of holding the longs and the shorts. Then we get to the third line. You start with a spondy, two longs. So cor, the O in corneli is long because it's followed by an RN. The E is long by nature. It's got a long mark. So you have corne. Lee is long, right? It's vocative. He's talking to uh, Cornelius right here. So you have Lee is long. Tibi is short. There's your dactyl. So our second foot is Lee Tibi. Then you have Nam, which is long by position because the A is followed by an M and a Q, the consonant cluster. Then remember, the QU counts as like um, one sound. It's not a vowel, so ignore it. The vowel you're looking at is the E in Nam Kwe. That's short because there's nothing to lengthen it. So you have Nam Kwe, long short, right? Our third foot. Two is long by nature. Sol is short. The E in, in sole boss is long by nature. And then the boss is also long because you have a long mark over the A. So this third line goes, corne li tibi nam kwe tu sole boss, right? You're kind of holding the long marks. Then you get to the fourth line, right? You actually start with a short here. So you have me as, right? It kind of rises up. Me is short, as is long. S is long by position because you have an E followed by two S's. The E on S A is going to elide into the aliquid, okay? So this is how you get the dactyl. It's S sale, right? S sale is the elision. A and le in aliquid are both short. The quid in aliquid is long. Now, how did this work? Because he put putare after it. So by putting a consonant after the quid, you're lengthening the I, right, in the quid. So you have quid long, pu short. Ta is long because it's long by nature, right? There's a long mark over the A. The R in putare is short. Then you end with a spondy, nu, gas, both long by nature. So when you put this together, you have meas, es, quid, putare, nu, gas, right? It's got that sort of rhythm to it, okay? The next line, we start with yam, right? Yam is long by position because the A is followed by an M and a T, consonant cluster. There you go. Same with tomb, the M and the C. So yam, tomb, these are both long by position. Now here we have kum ausis. Now this one's a little tricky, but remember we said in our rules of um, elision, U-M, right? A-M, U-M, E-M, when they're followed by a vowel, they will elide. So the A in ausis, is what's causing the elision with kum. So you basically get rid of that word and it's kaus, right? The AU is a diphthong, which is long. That's how this all works together. Otherwise, kumausis wouldn't make sense. I need a dactyl, it's kaususas, right? So long, short, short. So the us and kausus or ausus real uh, here, and the S are both short. So again, that second foot, the dactyl is kaususas. Then you have u, long by nature, and us, unus, right? Just a long and a short. The I in, Italio, uh, in, in Italorum rather, is long. So you have ita, long, short. Orum, the O is long, the U-M is short. So you put this together. Again, this line goes yam, tum, causus, as unus, italorum. Okay? Then we go to the next one. You have omne followed by iwum. This is going to have a lesion. So the om, the o in omne is long by uh, long by position rather because you have a consonant cluster after it. The e will drop off in a lesion. It elides into the ae, the diphthong, right? I, which is long because it is a diphthong. So our first foot is a spondy. It goes omni, right? You're holding both those. They're long. The um in iwum is long by uh, position because it's followed by an m and a t in r, right? It all makes it long. The E, or sorry, the I sound, the I in tribus is short. Same with the U-S. So it's going to go, that dactyl is going to go um tribus, right? Long, short, short. The E in explicare is long by position because it's followed by an X, which is really K and S put together. That's your consonant cluster. The I in explicare is short. There's nothing to lengthen it, right? So you have your long, short. The A, uh, because it's a first conjugation verb, is long. And then you have R, short. Then the last two here, you have cartis, right? A is long by position. There's an R and a T after it. The IS is long by nature. So if we put this, uh, put this all together, you're saying omni wum tribus explicare cartis, right? You're kind of holding those longs, okay? Next line, you have doctis, right? The O is long by position. There's a CT after it, a consonant cluster. The long I in doctis is long. So you have doctis, right? You're holding it. 
the uh, the U right here is you actually don't start with the I. Let me backtrack. The I in Jupiter. Remember when you have a, a word that starts with an I followed by a vowel? It's really consonantal. It's a J, which is why we say Jupiter in English, right? So I'm really looking at that U, and the U in Jupiter is long by position because there's two P's in Jupiter, so it becomes U, right? The I and the E in Iter are both short. So the word or the name rather Jupiter is a built-in dactyl Jupiter, right? Long, short, short. Et is long by position because it's followed by an L. Remember, that's a liquid, but it's it's making it long here because I need long, short in my meter. So et is long, la is short. The O in boreosis is long by nature. There's a long mark over it. The I is short. So I'm going et, la, boreosis, right? The osis are both long, O and I, long by nature. So when you put it together, you're saying doctis, Jupiter, et, la, boreosis. Right? You're kind of holding those longs. Okay? The next sign starts with the word quare, right? So here we have a lesion, though. So this one again is a little tricky. The qua, the A is long, long by nature. The E is aligning into the A because remember H doesn't count here, it's just a breathing sound. So what you really have are the E and quare followed by the A and habe. They need to align because it's two vowels. So the A and habe is short. So you're going to go qua ra. Right, qua ra. You're almost pretending the H isn't there. The bay tibi is your dactyl. Bay is long, tibi is short. So those first two feet go qua ra bay tibi, right? Qua ra bay tibi. You're kind of following the longs. Okay. The first quid in quid quid is long because it's followed by a D and a Q. The second quid is short because it's followed by a D and an H, and you pretend that the H isn't there. So that's what makes quid quid kind of a fun word. It's building its own sort of long by position in the first quid, which is long. The second one is short, so it's quid quid. Now the hoke in hoke libelli is long by position because you have a C followed by that L, that liquid. It lengthens the O in hoke. So hoke li right? The I is short. Bell is long, the E by position, because you have two L's after it, and the long I at the end finishes it off as being long. So to put this together, this line goes, qua ra be to be quid quid, uh, quid quid hoc li belli. Okay? Then you get to this line. You have qua le cumque is our first um, part of it. Okay? Qua is long, le is short. Cum is long by position because it's followed by an M and a Q. The que is short and the quote is short. That's how you get a dactyl. So you're going qua le cum que quote, right? The cum que quote is your built-in dactyl. O is long, pa is short. Now this one's a little tricky because T is followed by an R, but remember R is a liquid. It can be long or short depending on what the meter dictates. Hendecasyllabic needs a long short in that third foot, so the pa is going to be short. So you go O patrona, right? The O in patrona is long, the A uh is short. Weirgo is a spondy. The I is long by position. It's followed by an R and a G, and the O has a long mark over it. It's long by nature. So this line goes, quale cum que quote o patrona weirgo. Okay? Then you get the final line, plus uno manea. So plus is long by nature. There's a long U there. U is long by nature. So plus U is a, a spondy to start. The no in uno is long. Mane is both, uh, both those vowels are short. So it goes no mane. Okay, it's a dactyl. At in mane at is long by position because it's followed by a T and a P. The E in perene is short. So you go at pe. The re, the second E in perene is long by uh, position because there's two N's after it. So it's rene. So that word is kind of interesting. Perene goes short, long, short. Right? So you put it together, it goes at perene. You're kind of lifting on that second re. Okay? Then you end with cyclo, a spondy. The A, E, and cyclo is the diphthong, it's long, and the O is long by nature. So you put it together, you go plus uno maneat perene cyclo. Okay? You're kind of emphasizing the longs. All right? So let's pause the video right there. If you weren't sure of what I just did, or you're like, I have no idea what he's talking about, go back and watch the Rules of Scansion video. It'll help you unpack all this because there's a lot kind of going on there. But um, you could also look it up. Uh, there's resources online that would kind of help you. But the idea is you need to mark where the longs and the shorts are so you can get the rhythm of the poem. And that's how you really understand Latin poetry because it shows you the word choice is very specific because you have to put certain words in a certain order to make the meter work. Otherwise, it, would, it wouldn't work. Okay, so understanding the meter is critical for understanding the skill of the poet. Okay, 
To wrap it all up, this is what the store, uh, the poem rather would look like if you mark the long and the short. I just picked blue and orange for no particular reason. The blue in this case is long, the orange is short. So if you read this poem again, you'd go, Cui do no lepedum no wum libello. A rid do modo pumi kex polito. Corne li tibi nam que tu solebas. Meas es sale quid putare nugas. Yam tum causus asunus et italorum. Omni wum tribus explicare cartis. Doctis Jupiter et laboriosis. Quara be tibi quid quid hoc libelli. Quale cumque cor o patrona virgo. Plusu nu maneat perenne cyclo. Okay, and I'm emphasizing the longs to give it sort of that rhythm. You could probably do it better than me, particularly when I'm losing my voice. But it, hopefully this lets you see the idea. And even if you want, well, I'd encourage you to read aloud first off, bring it to life, or find a video of someone who could do it much better than me. But you are reading poetry. It's meant to be sort of sung and read aloud. But you can do this to read it in class or when you're on your own and really get the rhythm of it. I think it adds something. Um, honestly, I think if you're not doing the meter, it kind of comes across as reading, like I said, um, you know, lyrics from a song, just reading them aloud without the music. It's kind of weird. So hopefully this puts you on the right track. But in terms of the Latin, again, think about what I said. Understanding the meter of Catullus 1 helps you understand why he put every word in its very specific place. Some of it is for emphasis. A lot of it is for the meter. And it all kind of comes together to let you see what a skilled poet Catullus was. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to help. But otherwise, read this poem. Practice it. Read it aloud. Do what you got to do. And keep at it. The more you read it and practice your scansion, the better off you're going to be. And it gets easier as you go. Good luck.